something is going to happen. You will take something back home. Am I talking to somebody there today? It's coming to you in Jesus' name. Let's close our eyes as we pray. Father, in Jesus' name, we thank you and bless your name tonight. We glorify you. We know that you can never fail. Your power will never fail. And we bring all our people before your leaders, our workers, our members. And I invite you, everyone tonight. We pray, no Lord, without any exception. You shower your blessings upon everyone in Jesus' name. The power of the word will penetrate everyone and drive out anything that is hiding there, even in every heart, everyone, in Jesus' name. Every plant the heavenly Father has not planted in any of our lives here will be uprooted tonight. And you'll set your people free. Lord, as we read the word, as we study the word, as we hear the word, as we explain the word, enter into the word with your power and penetrate every life. But thank you because we know you have answered. We'll see wonder, wondrous, wonderful things even today in every life in Jesus' name. We well, thank you because we know you have done it. In Jesus' name I pray. I thought you could do a better amen than that. God bless you. God bless you. You can see that. We're coming to Matthew chapter 4. Matthew chapter 4. I'm reading from verse 19. Matthew chapter 4. We're looking at verse 19. What a verse this is. Open your Bible. And it says unto them, follow me, and I will make you fishers of men. Think about that. Follow me, and I will make you fishers of men. Here is the Lord Jesus Christ that calls each of us to himself. And when he did that, he did that for a reason. And he came and he saw this individual, and through this individual he's talking to you. And he looks at you in particular, he said, you know what? You have not measured up to the level God created you to be. He wants you to have a greater stature, a greater kind of uh, achievement. He wants you to get to the place you have never thought of and you have never known. And he said, I'm the only power representative from heaven that can do that in your life. And he says, and for that to take place, follow me. And I will make you, if you are nothing, if you are nobody, he'll make you somebody today. If you are down, he'll get you up today. If you are oppressed, he's going to deliver you today. If you are weak, he's going to make you strong today. And he said, I will make you. He wants to make you somebody. He will do it. When he said, follow me, he means come after me as your guide. There are many crossroads in life. There are many ways you don't understand. And there are many pits in the world that you just stumble. He said, but you know what? I'm your guide. Why have you left me alone? I would have directed you to the place of success and the place of victory. Come on now, follow me because you come after me as your guide. You know what he said? He said, accept my authority and follow my directives. He said, the society will lead you in the wrong way. Satan will lead you in the wrong way. Here I come. I am the way and the truth and the life. And I want to give you direction so that your life will have fulfillment. Accept my authority and follow my directives. It means when he said follow me, number three now, walk along with me and pursue my way of life. He said, I don't fail. I don't falter, I don't faint, I never fall down to anything, I'm always up, and I'm successful. Heaven recognizes that, and if you want success to be passed into your life, you know what you do? You're going to accept the way of the Lord, and you walk along with me, and you'll fulfill a great purpose in life. Your life is going to be meaningful from today in Jesus' name. You know what he means when he said follow me? It means that we should engage fully 
I'm faithfully in my pursuits. It says, I'm pursuing something. I'm going somewhere. I'm achieving something. And I call you to follow me so that, number five, you're calm, you copy me, you imitate me as your only perfect example. You can follow the examples of other people. You find some good things and bad things. You find some up, you find some down. But when you follow Christ, they say, Come after me and follow me and imitate me and live like me because I'm your perfect example. When you said follow me means keep your mind on me, fix your heart on me. Focus your attention on me. It says, if you're going to make it in life, I'm looking at somebody who will make it in life. Whatever your past has been, a change is taking place today. A turning around is taking place today. There is a renewal coming upon your life tonight. You will never be the same. You cannot enter into a place like this. You cannot uh, link with power, connect with power like this. Something will shake in your life. Something has to move in your life. Anything, all the curse, all the yoke, everything that tied you down before tonight is that night. Everything shakeable is going to be shaken out of your life tonight in Jesus' name. A kind of fire is burning already. A kind of fire. You may not see it. It's invisible. A burning in your life. It's going to burn everything that tied you before you came in here. It's going to burn everything in Jesus' name. That's why it says now for that to happen, it says, I'm the one to make it happen. Jesus Christ is the one to make something happen in your life tonight. Therefore, it says, keep your mind on me. Don't, you know, waver here and go there and fix your attention on me. Focus on me. And then it says, follow me. You know what it means by that? Just live like me. Just live for me. And just live your life. What will Christ do? Because now I'm following him. Somebody there said, I am following him. I said, I am following him. And I know that, you know, I put my feet where he put his feet. I walk after his, after his death. And I know victory is sure for me in Jesus' name. I've been talking to you on that first part. Follow me. And then he said, something will follow. Here is a consequence. Here is a corollary. Here is a thing that will naturally and normally and automatically follow. It says, follow me. And he puts a word there. We call it conjunction. It's a linking word. And, and, and I will make you. It's going to make you somebody. It's going to make you successful. It's going to make you powerful. Nobody ever has any connection with this one I'm talking about. With this Jesus I'm talking about. And then he remains the same. Weakness will vanish out of your life. When he says, I will make you. He gives us a promise that cannot fail. Heaven and earth may pass away. Demons may roam here and there. The ocean may spill over to the rest of the world. When Jesus Christ said, I will, that's a promise that cannot fail. Number two, it's a, it's a purpose that is fixed in heaven. Before Jesus Christ came to this world, the Father told him what to say. The Father told him what heaven has already planned. Before you came here tonight, the Almighty God knew that you were coming. Didn't he know? He knows your life. Didn't he know? He knows your need. Didn't he know? You are not here by accident. Somebody there, I said you are not here by accident. He said, the time has come for him. The time has come for her. And he gives us a purpose that is fixed, fixed in heaven. Not only that, he gives us a priority that we need to focus on. A priority that we need to focus on. Because he says, follow me and then leave the rest to me. All you need to do, you may even close your eyes and follow. He'll keep on walking. You might open your eyes and keep on following and you keep on walking. 
heaven is going to work in your life today. That's why he said, follow me. Because he has, he has now a perception of the fishermen. A perception of the fishermen. You know what I mean by that? Those fishermen, that be by the seaside, by the riverside. They toiled and toiled and toiled. They caught nothing. They tried and tried and tried. They got nothing. And then Jesus came. The day Jesus comes to your house, everything will turn around. And those people, the perception they had, the perception of failure, the perception of scarcity, the perception of famine, the perception of poverty, those perceptions, the Lord said, I have come. I'm going to turn everything around. Follow me and I will make you. I'm the person he was talking about. I said, I'm the person he was talking about. I will make you fishers of men. It's a prophecy that must be fulfilled. It's prophecy. Because he it said, it's not happened yet. There is a promise there. And then there's a prophecy there. It's a proclamation that cannot be faulted. The devil cannot fault this one. The devil cannot overturn this one. Jesus has spoken. It's the final word. It's the final authority. It's the final statement. When he says yes, all angels stand at attention. When he says come and I will do it, every, every agent and every element on, in heaven, on earth, they search to work, that thing will be done. It's demanding a perseverance that must not fade. A perseverance that must not fade. Hey, he called me. Thank God he has called me. Somebody there I said, thank God he has called me. He said, follow me and I will make you wonderful. All the dreams of my life, they are going to be fulfilled. All the desires of my life, my time has come. At Yikrodukhi, I said, your time has come. He, the King of kings and the Lord of lords. He, the one that never lost any battle. The master of circumstances and the master of every situation. He comes to you and he points at you and he says, follow me and I will make you. Your sorrow is gone. Your failure is gone. All the palpitations of the heart. What am I going to do? Where am I going to get this? Praise the Lord you are here tonight. Because he will make you. What heaven has ordained you will be. You will be in Jesus name. And he's talking to a people that will remain faithful. Talking to a people that will keep on hearing the words that Jesus said. He said, follow me. He said, follow me. He said, follow me. When any other strange voice is coming, he said, no, that's different. He said, follow me. And I'm going to follow. And I'm going to follow until he does what he said he will do. He will do it in Jesus' name. I'm talking to you tonight in this first part on the fruitfulness of Christ's faithful followers. The fruitfulness, because you are going to be fruitful. Are you there? I said, are you there? I can't be, I can barely hear your voice. You are there. It's going to do it tonight for you in Jesus' name. Barrenness will vanish away. It's tonight. Scarcity will vanish away. And it's tonight. Poverty will vanish away. And it's tonight. Unemployment will vanish away. And it's tonight. And then impotence, they said, he cannot produce, he cannot produce. Not from tonight. Not from tonight. Production. Productivity has come in Jesus' name. The fruitfulness of Christ's faithful followers. There are three things very quickly. Number one, the expected manifestation of faithfulness in ministers. The expected manifestation of faithfulness in ministers. You see, as he calls us, he says, follow me. And he wants us to be faithful. He wants us. That's what he expected. He didn't expect that he will call Peter. 
and then he wants to change his life and change his destiny, he'd expect that Peter would say, no, 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 I cannot follow. Of course, he just got up and he followed. And then he called Matthew and he said, follow me. He didn't expect that Matthew will say, I, don't, I will consider it. I'll think about it. The Almighty has spoken. The King of Kings has spoken. The one that has the key to the success of your life has spoken. Once he has spoken, it's expected you would obey. And you are going to obey him tonight. And as you obey him tonight, you, you will even feel it inside your soul. The change and the transformation that will come. It will come tonight in Jesus' name. I'm coming back. I'm coming back to that. Matthew chapter 4 verse 19. And he said unto them, follow me. And I will make you fishers of men. When he said follow me, number one, that's the call. That's the call. When somebody knocks at your door and he calls your name, and he has something waiting for you. He has a gift for you. It is registered on your name. And he calls you. When he calls me, I will answer. Number two is the command. It's the command. Follow me. It is, there's no suggestion here. There is no thinking of what did he mean by that. It's simple words. Follow me. It's a command. It's a calling, a calling. He said, I'm not getting you to a new lifestyle, a new profession, and a new engagement, and a new employment. Follow me. It is a calling. You know, it's a commission. He was getting to the man. He said, have you heard of commissioner so-and-so? Yes, I have. Have you heard about commissioner so-and-so? Yes, I have. What do you know about them? Well, Commissioner, the government gave him a post. Tell me more. The government gave him a commission portfolio. Tell me more. The government fixes a salary. Tell me more. The government gave him means of transportation. Tell me more. The government even had pension post policy for him now a commission is coming to you the kingdom of heaven is appointing you a commission <laughs> salary settled remuneration settled health policy settled protection security settled did you see that commissioner, they gave him oddly, and they gave him people that were, you know, he wants to enter the door, the car, they open for him. He wants to come down, and then they open for him. When you appointed a commissioner by the Lord, the angels are opening around you. They are watching you. Don't touch him, don't touch him. And anybody that wants to come in to harm you, the angels, they get there immediately because I'm talking about a commissioner. I said I'm talking about a commissioner. It is a commission that he gives you. Now I'm talking about consecration. Consecration. When he said, follow me. He says, you will not follow the path that will lead to destruction. You're going to consecrate and you're going to abandon yourself to this to say, he has called me. He has commanded me. He has given me a calling. He has given me a commission. He makes me a commissioner, and I give myself to that. Look up for a moment. Have you seen somebody before he was appointed commissioner? You'll find him in the nightclub, and he's drinking, and, you know, dancing on the street. Even though he was educated, but, you know, what, what else will he do? And then one day, they said for him, and as they said for him in the head office of the government, they said, well, we've been checking up on you. You have this certificate, you have this certificate, and all. He said, yes. And they are present, you are not doing this anyway. Today now, you are appointed this and that. He says, me, he says, wonderful. And then they give him all the documents and everything. Now they say, honorable so-and-so. You see there? Is she there? Honorable so-and-so. You know, honorable comes back, and now he knows who he is. I am a minister. I am a commissioner. And then the nightclub where he used to dance on the street, you see there again, ah, it's commissioner now. 
Because the commissioner, he does not, you know, dance like he danced on the street before. He does not go to drink in those places before. Because now he knows that there is a commitment and there is a consecration. Not only that, follow me. Follow is not just one step. It's one step, another step, another step, another step. What's that? Continuation. Continuation. The Lord was calling them to a continuation. He says, it's a new life. It's a new position. It's a new privilege. And then there is also the constriction. Constriction. Constriction means that now you cannot go just anywhere. Now you cannot just as associate with anybody. Because you see that commissioner. He cannot associate with criminals anymore. He cannot just say, now you are my friend, I'm your friend. He has to know who they are. He has to know their credentials because of his position now. And as the Lord called them and said, follow me. He was telling them, now there is constriction. Not only that, there is connection. Follow me and I'm going to connect you with heaven. Somebody there tonight, you are connected with heaven. Follow me. What did he mean by that? He means... Follow my commandment. Follow my commandment. When he says follow me, it's not just a physical thing. It's not just that, you know, it's going from Mikrodi, it's going to, you know, the other place, and then it's following him. What he means is that you follow my commandment. When he says follow me, number two, it means follow my character. He has chosen you. He has called you. And he says follow me. It means follow my character. It means follow my career. Follow my career. That's what it means to so follow him because he says... Here is my career now. I am here to seek and to save that which was lost. I am here to do good. I'm here to touch lives. I'm here to, to touch other people and to transform the lives of other people. That's my career. Follow me. Follow my career. It means, number four, follow my cause. My cause of action. My cause in life. And my cause in everything that I do, it means I have a commitment. Follow my commitment. There's only one thing I'm thinking about, how the lost will be saved. There's only one thing I'm thinking about. I'm thinking how the people of the world will see the light, the light of heaven. That is my commitment. When it says follow me, it means follow my commitment. It also means follow my concentration. My concentration, it says my life is a concentrated life. It's not a life that is scattered here and there. I don't spread myself thin. There is this one thing I do. Concentration, nothing else, nothing more, and nothing less. No more, no less, nothing else. This is it. The cream of life. The goodness of life. The thing to do. Is your life like that? That's what Jesus is saying. He says, if you are scattered here and there, you're not following me. If you are up and down, you're not following me. If you're not following a straight course, you're not following me. If you're not concentrating and focusing on your mind, one thing, one life, one job, one assignment, one purpose and one destiny. If there's no concentration like that, he said, come. I want to make you somebody. Somebody that will follow. And then you know there is concentration. Not only that, it tells us that there is condescension. Condescension. We're thinking of the God of, the God of heaven and the King of kings and the Lord of lords. He came to this world and he lowered himself. And he says, that life of humility, that life of service, come, follow me. And it is talking about his condescension. Look at those words, follow me. When he says, follow me, he said, follow me as Lord and Savior. You're not following him like a colleague. You're not following him like a junior. You're not following him like a little boy you got in your street and said, do you know such and such a market? And he said, yes, I know. And then you say, okay, little boy, can you lead me there? And that little boy, you are older, you are wiser, you are greater, you are stronger, but he's a little boy, but he knows the market, and therefore you are following him as a junior person. No, this one is the high savior, and the Lord is the most high, is the great God of heaven, is people 
from all eternity and to all eternity. And it comes to you as Lord. It comes to you as Master. It comes to you as the omnipotent. It comes to you as the omniscient. It comes to you as someone who knows all things about you. All things about your past, all things about your present, all things about your future. And he says, what you don't know, I know, I will show you, follow me. And now your life is secured. I said your life is secured because you follow him, number one, as Lord and Savior. Number two, you follow him as shepherd, as shepherd. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. Here the shepherd comes to call the sheep, the sheep that is weak. The sheep that knows nothing. The sheep that has nothing. And the shepherd says, follow me. And then the sheep is so happy because now all the wolves of your life, they are silenced. All the lions in the forest, they are silenced. All those serpents in the bush, in the green grass, they are, they are destroyed in Jesus' name. Because you are following him as a shepherd. You are following him as master. He said, you call me Lord and master. You say, where? Well, and here the master comes to you now. And you say, I'm not a master of myself. He is my master now. He is my leader now. He is my captain now. You are following him as your guide. As your guide. And he knows where you are going to find everything you are looking for. There's something you are looking for. He knows how you are going to get it. And this week is going to open a new door in your life in Jesus' name. You're following him as the head of the church. He's the head. He's the head. And we are the body. And here is the head that is coming to us. He comes with final authority. And he said, follow me. You will follow. Somebody there said, you will follow. And as you follow tonight, something good, something great, something unthinkable that you never thought about before is coming upon your life in Jesus' name. Point number two now, the excellent multiplication of followers of the master. The excellent multiplication of followers of the master. Now, when we follow like that, what's going to happen? Come back to Matthew chapter 4, and I'm reading from verse 19. Matthew chapter 4, verse 19, and he says unto them, I'm going to make it personal, and he says unto me, I can't hear my people, and he says unto me, thank God I hear his voice today. When you hear his voice, it will silence the voice of Satan. It will silence the voice of evil spirits. It will silence the voice of all the destroyers in this world, all the destroyers that are trying to run after your life tonight. They're gone in Jesus' name. It says, now, it says unto them, tell me what he said unto them. Tell me what he's saying unto you. Follow me, and I will make you fishers of men. I will make you. It tells us the purpose of his call is to make each of us, each believer, and each minister, and each follower, a fisher of men. You say, I don't understand that. I don't understand that. A fisher of men. I'm not a fisherman. Let me explain to you. Peter was a fisherman. And then he went to the seaside. He caught nothing. And he went again. He caught nothing. And Jesus said... Your career is good. Your profession is wonderful. There's nothing wrong in it. The only thing is you don't have a supernatural element with that profession. For example, you are a father. That's wonderful. But father, a failure. There's nothing wrong with being a father. For example, you are a mother. And as a mother, you're not satisfied. I wish this will happen. I wish that will happen. There's nothing wrong in being a mother. For example, you are a professional. But that profession, look at what is coming. There's nothing you are getting out of that. There is labor. There is sweat. But there is nothing. There's no satisfaction. For example, you are a teacher. You are a proprietor. That's all right. There's nothing wrong with being a proprietor. But what he's saying is this, Peter, you're a fisherman. But a fisherman that has no fruit, that has no fulfillment, 
I'm going to clean off this profession for you and you'll be the best of fishermen you could ever be in your life. The best of the father you could ever be in your life. The best of the mother you can ever be in your life. The best of a professional you can ever be in your life. And then it's going to be a higher realm because it's saying, I'll make you a fisher of men. Well, you have to understand the Bible to understand that language. Actually, the Bible says that sea represents humanity. That's why when we're talking, we say, I saw a sea of heads. That means humanity. There are very many there. It's like a sea. And Jesus said, you've been going to the natural sea, and you've been trying to catch fish. Okay, let me show you. Throw your net there, and he threw it there, and he caught what, what he had never seen in his life before. He said, well, that's what I'm going to make of you. You are going to be a success. Failure is going to be cancelled. But now, you are going to go to the sea of humanity. And you are going to catch men. That's what he was telling him. And that's what he's telling you today. Whatever you are today, he will make you the best you can ever be. Whatever you are looking for, he will make you the best you can ever be. You will catch. I said you will catch. You will succeed. And you'll be the best that you can ever be in Jesus' name. And look at look at the promise. Look at what he said in partnership with him. The promise, this promise cannot fail. Number one, follow me. That's it. Follow me. You, you, tonight you just say, Lord, why are you still telling me follow me? Already I go to church, follow me. Already I'm a believer, follow me. Already I'm a minister. Follow me. Already I'm a preacher. Follow me. Already I'm a prayer warrior. Follow me. Already I'm an evangelist. Follow me. Already I do this. I do that. Follow me. There is an area of your life, an area of your ministry that the name is there. The profession is there. Going to the sea is there. Trying to catch is there. But Look at the minimal success you have. And today can become a turning point in your life. A turning point in your ministry. That you just say, now I understand. Follow me. I'm going to follow him. I said, I'm going to follow him. And then he says, and, and. He says, be looking for what will follow. Be looking for what result will come. You see, there are many people, they come to a program like this, and after the program, they just say, praise the Lord, I was there. They're not looking for what will follow. Tonight, as you go back home, look for what will follow. Tomorrow when you wake up, you look for what, because he said, follow me, and it's and, 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 and that and is a long and. That and will still be there tomorrow. That and will still be there next week. That and will still be there next month. Follow me as you keep on following. As you keep on following, he said, and, and, and then he said, I. That's the creator talking. That's the one when he says, yes, no Satan can say no. I will do something. When he says, yes, when he wants to heal you, there's no incurable disease. When he wants to prosper you, there is no recession. And when he wants to turn your life around, there is no impossibility. When he wants to move the mountain of your life, there is nothing that can hinder him. And he says, follow me, and I will. I will is different from, if I feel good, I may. If I think over it again, I will. If I don't think that we're getting too much, maybe I'll try. But he says, I put myself down. This one, even myself, I cannot change this. Because once the word comes out of his mouth, it cannot change anymore. I said it cannot change anymore. When he says, I will heal you, that's final. When he says, I'll give you a miracle, that's final. 
When he says, I'll prosper you, that's final. When he says, I'll change your destiny, that's final. When he says, I will save you, that's final. And when he says, I'm going to turn your life around, and all that sorrow and all that regret is going to vanish away from your life, thank God he has spoken the final word in my life. Any other word that comes, they come too late. Satan comes, it comes too late. Evil people come and they come to a leech. And they want to, they go and lock one padlock somewhere. They mention your name, it is too late. And then they throw padlock into the sea. I said, it is too late. And then they carry your, they carry your photograph and they carry your name about and say, it's him, it's him. Help me do something. Kill him, touch him. It is too late because Jesus said, I will. It is going to be fulfilled in your life. Anybody there tonight? I said anybody there tonight? He said, I will make what you would. I will make what you would. He says, it's going to manufacture you afresh. It's going to create you afresh. It's going to do something. You're a minister already. It's going to make you now a real minister. You're a preacher already. It's going to make you now a real preacher. Something is going to happen today. And then he says, I'll make you. Whatever happens to other people, don't worry. But you tonight. I said you tonight. My daughter there, you tonight. My son there, you tonight. Something is happening already. And everything that God needs to touch and transform in your life, tonight is that night, it will do it in Jesus' name. Take the first step, and then it will perform the second part of the statement, and there will be multiplication of reproductive followers and members, even from tonight, in Jesus' name. What kind of members does he want to reproduce? If you look at your Bible, there are some people in the Bible. Uh, for example, look, look at Caleb. All the other people said, we cannot, we cannot, we cannot. Here Caleb stood up. Somebody is going to be a Caleb today. And he says, let us go up at once because we are well able. And then 45 years passed and he came to Joshua. In Joshua chapter 14, I said, Joshua, do you remember? Do you remember what I said the other time? That we are well able, 45 years in the wilderness has not changed me. 45 years of up and down has not changed me. 45 years of all the children of Israel roaming about has not changed me. Like I said 45 years ago, I mean 85 years now, he said, I still say, we're well able, give me this mountain. God will make you like that. And then God will reproduce people like Caleb, and then you will stand, you'll stand firm in Jesus' name. Uh, there is a man that is called Elisha. That's Elisha. Elijah came to him and then threw a mantle on him. And then Elisha said, let me just say bye-bye to my parents because when I left home this morning, I didn't know that days will come. This is a new day and this is a new decision and this is a new kind of project. And then Elijah said, what have I done to you? Just say, you know, go your way. And then he went and he burnt the bridge behind him. Burnt the bridge behind him. Everything that would be a hindrance, he burnt everything. And then he came to follow like you are following today. I said you are following tonight. And then uh, eventually the day that Elijah was to go, some of the people came, 50 men, sons of the prophets said, do you know the Lord is going to take your master away from your head? They said, I know it, hold your peace. I'm not talking, I'm following. I said, I'm not talking, I'm following. Somebody there said, I'm not talking, I'm following. And then they go to the next place. Do you know the Lord is going to take your master away from your head today? No, I don't want to talk. I'm focusing. I'm concentrating. I'm following. And I want to continue till that point. And eventually, like I just said, you've been following me. Now tell me, what's your mind? What do you want? The people that come to meetings like this, they don't want anything. They said, I just come to see what's happening. Me, I don't just come. I want something. I said I want something. 
And so Elijah said, tell me what you want. He said, I want a double portion of the Spirit of God on you to be on me. Elijah said, double portion? How can I give you double portion? You have asked a hard thing. Nevertheless, if you pay attention, nevertheless, if you focus, nevertheless, if you fix your attention and you fix your mind and you see me when I'm taking it away, it shall be so. And then Elisha, that man was a wise man. I pray you'll be a wise man like that. And then the chariot came from heaven and then took him away and he said, I see, I see. Somebody there tonight, I see. Somebody there tonight I see. And then the mantle fell down. He knew, he knew that was a symbol. And he picked that mantle. And then he got to that Jordan River. Jordan, Jordan will pass before you, you know. I said that Jordan will pass before you. And then he rolled that mantle together. And he said, where is the God of Elijah? And he smote that Jordan. The same thing that happened when, Je when Elijah did that. That same thing happened. The same thing that happens when we speak. That same thing will happen when you speak. The same power. The same anointing. The same unction. The same courage. The same conviction. The same breakthrough. You've got it today, my brother. You've got it today, my sister. And then all those people that were watching, there are people who are watching, they're going to see that you're a different man. You're a different woman. And then they came to bow down. They said, the spirit of Elijah has come upon, has come upon, has come upon Elisha. You know, those are, those are the people who are looking for today a multiplication, a multiplication of Elisha's. A multiplication of Caleb's, a multiplication of people that will follow after the Lord and they'll never go back. And you are the person today. You will never go back in Jesus' name. Point number three, our expanding ministration for fruitfulness in ministry. Expanding. Expanding. You will expand. Your life will expand. Your family will expand. Your profession will expand. Your ministry will expand. Your church will expand. The expanding ministration of fruitfulness in ministry. Uh, about, about the time that Jesus was to live, he now told the people that he had called those people that he said, follow me and I will make you fishers of men. Look at them now. John chapter 15. John chapter 15. And I'm reading from verse 16. Ye have not chosen me, but I have chosen you. Ye have not chosen me, but I have chosen you. Thank God I am chosen. I say thank God I am chosen. You, you know, there's a difference between, you know, you choosing something, you know, and then they choosing you. You know, you, you went to college, and when you go to college, you say, I like this course. And then uh, you choose the course by yourself. And as you go to the class, things are turning upside down. It's like, you know, what, what, what mistake did I make? Why did I choose this? Well, leave him. Uh, let's come to another person. Uh, you got there. And as you got there, the uh, principal, the proprietor, the teachers, the faculty, everybody they have been looking for, they are carrying your photograph and they are carrying your name. And they said, this person, this person, where is he? They, where is he? And then the fellow students told you, they have been searching for you. What did you do? What happened to you? And as they are all searching for you, eventually they got you. They said, they are calling you. Who is calling me? Everybody. Proprietor, principal, lecturer, faculty, everybody calling you. And then you got there and they said, you are so and so. They said, yes. You know, we have uh, chosen you to study this course. And your failure or your success or your past or whatever... That depends on us because your failure is our failure. Your success is our success because we chose you. If you don't make it, it's not your fault. It means we made a mistake. That other one that chose by himself, that's him. But the one that everybody in the college had chosen, if he doesn't make it, 
All the faculty will know that they're a failure. They made a mistake. How did you choose somebody? And you said, we're sure of him. That's what God is telling you. He said, you are not the one that chose. He said, he, the Almighty, is the one that looked and ransacked the whole of the community and the whole of your village and the whole of your local government. And he said, that one. That one. That one. Money give me. And all the angels, they are hovering and they are running. That one. And he brings, he said, no, 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 that one. This one. This one. Where is that one now? I said, where is that one now? He said, you have not chosen me, but I, the Almighty, I, the one that cannot make a mistake, the one that wants to walk on you. And no matter how down you have been, he wants to lift you up to the highest place. He said, I have chosen you i am chosen i said i am chosen and you know the way i say because i'm sure of myself that i am chosen no see the way you say your own he says you have not chosen but i have chosen you and ordained you that you should go and bring forth fruit i'm going to be fruitful i said i'm going to be fruitful he said that she should go and bring forth fruit and that your fruit should remain and that, look at this one, and that, tell me, and that whatsoever ye shall ask the Father in my name, he may give it to you. Can you think of any fisherman who never goes to the sea to the side of the river for fishing? He reads and studies about fishing. He never goes to the side of the sea. And he reads, he hears, and teaches, or learns about fishing. But he never goes there. He prays and intercedes. He desires and discusses. He believes and he defends fishing. But he never goes to do something practical. He consecrates and he contends earnestly for fishing. But he never goes there. He thinks and he talks about fishing. But he never does it. The Lord is telling us, I have chosen you to do something Get up and do it. And you will succeed. I said you will succeed. The Lord is telling us then that he wants you to be fruitful. He wants you to be faithful. He wants you to be a fruitful follower of Christ. And a faithful follower of Christ. And as you do that, success has come in your life. Victory has come in your life. Breakthrough has come in your life. Follow me and I will make you Fishers of men, fishers of men, preachers of the gospel, and the work of God is going to prosper in your hands in Jesus' name. Anybody want you to follow there? Anybody want to be a minister there? Why don't you stand up and say, Lord, here am I today. I will follow. Here am I today. I will follow. Here am I today. I will follow. Open your mouth and talk to the Lord in prayer. He's talking to you. He has chosen you. He's talking to you. He has picked you up. He's talking to you and he's saying, you must concentrate and you must give yourself completely and totally, totally, unreservedly to this work I'm calling you to do. And this work will prosper in your hand. A follower, a follower, a follower, he has chosen you. He has chosen you. He has called you. You will do it. Follow him. As a call, follow him, that's a command. Follow him, that's your calling. Follow him, it's a commission. Follow him, he wants you to continue. Follow him in connection, connection with the Lord. You keep on serving the Lord, know him. This work will prosper in your hand. In Jesus' name we pray. I lost a crow. Do amen. Father, in the name of Jesus, we have the call of Christ. We have had the commission of Christ and we have heard he wants us to concentrate on just this one thing that we follow him. 
we follow his lifestyle, we follow his ministry, and we follow the calling he has given us. And Lord, I pray for all the brothers and sisters, all the workers, all the members of the church, and all the ministers. I pray, Lord, from tonight, we'll follow you with a new zeal, with a new passion, with a new commitment, and with a new consecration. And Lord, everything you want us to do in preaching the gospel, everything you want us to do in touching lives, everything you want us to do in ministering life unto people, we will do it. And as we have said, that will make all species of men. Lord, I pray, do a creative work right now. More courage, more commitment, more power, more strength, more divine energy. Lord, do it in Jesus' name. I will pray, Lord, we'll never leave this work you have committed into our hands. We'll do it until we succeed, we we'll finish, and we we'll say like Paul the Apostle, a forty good fight. I brought the race, and now there is a crown of righteousness waiting for each of us. Confirm it in Jesus' name. Do it in every life. Thank you because we know you have answered. In Jesus' name we pray. Another amen before you sit down.